Welcome to another episode of the Fab Forums. Back on the Bibster, another Bibster video. This thing is coming along extremely fast. Uh, I'm very pleased with it so far. I will tell you that it always won't be like this though. I'm gonna work full bore on this thing until pits. After pits, I'll probably try to incorporate some things to make some shorter um, videos that don't take as much filming, so or as much fabrication, I guess, either. Uh, the problem with this thing is that it takes so much fabrication that it's harder for me to get out videos. After pits, I will do like, uh, I'll work on this for like an entire week, so you'll get one video a week of this, and then I'll try to drop other uh, videos in there that are shorter, not so time consuming. I'm super stoked about the progress on this thing. Uh, some of the stuff you haven't seen yet, but I will bring to you. So a lot of parts are kind of rolling in that I thought might work. And then once I get them in my hands, I can kind of see if they are going to work or not. And so far, so good. Everything's coming together pretty much like I planned. Made a lot of progress on the tubes for this thing, on the back half of it. That's what I'm going to show you in this video. Won't be long and the back will be done as far as suspension goes. I want to mention something real quick before I get started on this video. Uh, if you're anywhere near the Austin, Texas, Round Rock area, I'm going to be doing a meetup uh, February 22nd at Craft and Racked. You can look it up or you can go on my Facebook page, the Fab Forms Facebook page. All the details are there. It'll be like 7 to 10 Craft and Racked in Austin, Texas. If you're of age, you can come drink beer with me. If you're not of age, stop by, say hey and uh, should be a good time. So one of the first things that I had to do before I actually started working on this was I had to get my Everlast TIG rig set up uh, under my welding table. Pretty simple, just to lay down some angle brackets, a little bit of barn wood, or I call barn wood, it was actually like fence posts, and then uh, made a couple hangers and voila, I got me a nice TIG rig. thing I really dig about this new setup is that I opted for the uh, extra long torch setup. So I think it's like 25 foot. The machine, the table, none of that stuff has to be moved. The actual 
torch itself will reach everywhere I need to reach. I just ground the car and I'm good to go. Once the TIG machine was ready, then it was on to the car. So the first thing I did was I wanted to get the radiator mounted just so I can kind of have a reference of where everything's going to go, how much room I got back there for different things, what it was going to look like, how I thought it might work. So I made some little brackets for the radiator, mounted those, set everything in there, welded it up, and then I made some down tubes. So on this particular setup, I needed some down tubes to go from the, the main hoop down to that back bar. And where those bars tied in is where the cantilevers will sit. Uh, so I kind of wanted to strengthen that uh, the best that I could. All right, so got the radiator mounted, uh, brackets for this thing where it just bolts in, got the down tubes coming back to this bar, got all that tacked in. Now it's time to come back here, finish up the mounts uh, for the four link suspension that's gonna be on this thing. It's gonna be a triangulated style uh, four link setup, very similar to the factory Fox body stuff. I've gotta bend a couple little bars, uh, make some mounting points for them. I want to kind of show you what I got going on. So on the back of this thing, I'm going to run a setup like this. This is just your standard hot rod coilover setup. Uh, some QA1 shocks with adjusters and an adjustable bracket. This will hang right off the back of the rear end. And you know, I talked a little bit about the cantilevered setup on this thing. I'm going to make some brackets that kind of just fall right off this piece right here. One side will go to the top of the coilover shock setup. The other side will go inside and tie into this hydraulic uh, cylinder that I've got here. This is what they call like a six inch stroke hydraulic cylinder. This is what they use in uh, a lot of the hydraulic setups for like um, the low riders. It's just got one port on the bottom, a three eighths port. And then the top is half 20, I believe. Uh, still waiting on some parts. Going to have a heim joint that goes in here uh, so I can attach this to the bracket that I'm going to make. Uh, and then the way that I'm going to mount this thing, I'm not 100% sure yet, but I may weld to the body of this thing itself some tabs that come off, or I may make a sleeve that goes over this. The sleeve itself will have the tabs. But whatever happens, this will go down here on the inside. Got a cantilever lever that attaches to this on the outside. Uh, pretty simple, when the hydraulic cylinder pushes up, it'll push down on the shock, lifting the car to its ride height, which can be adjusted via these, uh, however I need to. Pretty simple, right? So anyway, that's what I need to get to working on. Uh, one of the first things I need to do is bend a couple bars, make some mounts for this um, four link setup which will be all half inch, uh, inch and a half chrome molly tube. Uh, I've got inserts and heim joints for that. So just gotta make those mounting points and then I can move on to this stuff.
Once those lower down bars were in, then I needed to kind of brace them from being pulled in. So uh, if you think about like a triangulated forelink, or at least the Mustang style tri triangulated forelink, the upper bars are angled out. And so anytime you, you put that under a load, the top of the rear end is trying to pull back on those bars. And I didn't want it to flex those in any. And so I wanted to make some kickers that kind of went out, brace those so they wouldn't go anywhere, they wouldn't flex. I also felt like if I did it properly, they would double as hangers for the hydraulic cylinders and they happen to be in just the right spot. So that's what I did. Just like four inches out, like a 40 degree bend, and then it tied right into the center section of the, of the transmission loop. So the way that it sits now, uh, the four link bars will tie in in the same spot. Basically the lowers will just go straight tie in. The uppers will go out and tie in just above the lowers. Um, just over from that, the hydraulic cylinders will tie in and then they'll attach to a cantilever. I've actually kind of started mocking up what the cantilever might look like. So it's going to hinge here in the center and then you'll have the hydraulic cylinder mount on this end. The rear coilover shock setup will mount on this end and that's how you'll raise and lower the car. This is just a mock-up. I don't really know how it's going to look when I finally decide how it's going to be. So that's it for work on this thing. It was very time consuming. Uh, a lot of these little tiny bars were, were pretty tedious to put in here. 
had to think a lot about how I wanted them ahead of time so everything will work perfectly once I get to that stage. One of the things I did want to mention that I kind of failed to mention before was on the last video I kind of talked about some of the ideas I had as far as suspension goes. I had a lot of you guys comment and basically give me feedback on what you felt like I could do or maybe give me some ideas. And I always appreciate that. The one thing that I want you guys to kind of envision on this build as I envision it is that I don't, I don't want it to be like anything else that's already been done. I mean, that's the whole idea behind the Fox body body. Um, you know, a lot of guys that say, hey, you know, put uh, Mustang 2 front suspension on it. That'd be easy. Well, Mustang 2 front suspension's on every hot rod, right? So I'm not necessarily after easy. I'm after different. Uh, same thing with, like, the cantilever setup. I had a lot of people asking, you know, why don't you do a cantilever setup very similar to the F1 stuff, which would be really cool. Um... You know, cantilever up front. The problem I'm running into on this, I really want to hang on to the struts. I don't want to do a double wishbone. Um, so doing the double, doing the cantilever setup as you normally see it would be tough with the strutted suspension. I like the idea of doing something like that, and I may end up actually using that sort of cantilever on a future project. For this thing, though, I really want to use as many Fox Body parts as I can. I mean, that's the idea. It's a Fox Body hot rod. Uh, kind of ran into that with the pedal setup. A lot of guys suggested I run like a reverse pedal setup inside or one in the floor. Not bad suggestions. Those are actually great uh, things to use. For this particular setup, the one in the floor wouldn't work because there's not going to be any room. Once you lay this thing out, really the floor pan is going to be touching the ground. Um, as far as the reverse mount in here, would have worked perfectly fine. I like the idea of having the Fox Body stuff though, the Fox Body pedals. The Fox Body Master Cylinder, I like that idea. If I can make it all work the way that I want it to, that's the route I want to go. I kind of want to keep it true to the Fox Body Air, but it be a hot rod. All right, guys, there you go. It's getting interesting. Things are starting to come together. This thing is just going to be crazy. It's going to be so crazy. Uh, I wish you could see in my mind right now. And the more that it comes together, I'm sure that you can kind of get a feel of where I'm going versus maybe how it, you thought it was going to go in the beginning. Uh, the thing that I can tell you is that if you feel like you know where it's going, you don't. I still have a lot of surprises for you. This thing is going to be nuts. As always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys some more this week. Go do work, son.